We are going to take our reading now. Already as announced before, our topic this evening, our topic this evening, I already announced it. We are still continuing with the theme of spiritual warfare. The topic is divine counsel in the spiritual in spiritual warfare. It comes from Joshua chapter 9, verse 1 to 14. Let me take the reading now, then I'll hand over to our sister, Sharon of Court. Joshua 9, verse 1 to 14. And it came to pass, when all the kings who were on this side of the Jordan, in the hills and in the lowlands, and in all the coasts of the great sea, toward Lebanon, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite heard about it, that they gathered together to fight with Joshua and Israel with one accord. But when the inhabitants of Geb Gebion heard that Joshua had heard what Joshua had done to Jericho and I, they worked craftily and went and pretended to be ambassadors, and they took old sacks on their donkeys, old wine skins, torn and mended, old and patched sandals on their feet, and old garments on themselves, and all the bread of their provision was dry and moldy, and they went to Joshua, to the camp at Gilgal, and said to him and to the men of Israel, we have come from a far country. Now, therefore, make a covenant with us. Then the men of Israel said to the Hivites, Perhaps you dwell among us. So how can we make a covenant with you? But they said to Joshua, We are your servants. And Joshua said to them, Who are you? And where do you come from? So they said to him, For a, From a very far away country, your servants have come because of the name of the Lord your God, for we have heard of his fame and all that he did in Egypt and all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan, to she Shihon, king of Heshbon, and Og, king of Bashan, who, were, who was at Ashron. Therefore, our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spoke to us, saying, Take provisions with you for the journey and go to meet them and say to them, we are your servants. Now, therefore, make a covenant with us. This bread of, our, of ours, we took hot for our provision from our houses on the day we departed to come to you. But now, look, it is dry and moldy. And these wine skins, which are filled with new wine, with the, which were new, and see they are torn, they are torn, and these old garments and our sandals have become old because of the very long journey. Then the men of Israel took some of their provisions, but they did not ask counsel of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. My dear brethren, at this point, may I invite Sharon to speak to us. Sharon, you are most welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mama Rufina, for leading us in a word of prayer and for reading the text for us. Friends, let me add my voice to hers to welcome you to this fellowship this evening. It is not something we take for granted that we are able to be here, to have data to log on, to have time to fellowship, even uh, virtually. We don't take it for granted. We bless the Lord. Also, thank you, Mama Rufina, for praying for me. I honestly want to reduce that Christ may be exalted in me and that uh, he may be heard 
than me. So allow me to say a short prayer. Lord our God, we bless you indeed. We praise you because you're God and God alone. We have no other God beside you. Oh Lord our God, this evening we submit ourselves and we humble ourselves under the mighty arm of God who we are confident that in due time, indeed he will exalt us. This evening I submit to your leadership, O Holy Spirit, and I decrease that you may increase in me. I pray that you will be magnified and glorified this evening through your word. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you for every soul that has logged on and those that are logging on. Lord, we pray that you draw us into your presence and you feed us and you renew our strength that when we mount on two wings as eagles, we may not grow weary, that when we run, we may not get tired. Oh, Lord our God, that you renew your right spirit within us, that you create in us a clean heart and a contrite spirit, that, Lord our God, you set us apart for your own glory. You set us apart for your kingdom. Lord, that you open our eyes and our ears and our understanding and give us discerning spirits to know that as Christians, we are on a battlefront constant and that there is no retreat, there is no surrender, that we are here to resist the enemy until he flees. James tells us in James chapter four, verse seven, to resist the devil and he will flee from us. For we know him, we know how he works. We know Paul has already educated us that his schemes are familiar to us. Even this day, oh Lord our God, we are not ignorant. We are not ignorant. We know how we work, why he, how he works. We know his three-point program, as is told to us in John 10.10. 10. His mission statement is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But we are aware. We are aware of his workings. And so tonight, as we indeed share in the word divine counsel in spiritual warfare, Lord our God, that indeed we receive counsel from the Holy Spirit and that your name, Lord our God, will be glorified. Thank you, Jesus, for in Jesus' name we pray. And brethren, say. Amen. 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 Yeah, usually I, I tell if I share with that amen is not an encouragement to the preacher. It is divine confirmation of God's decree upon your life. So when you say amen, don't think you're encouraging the preacher. You're simply agreeing with what the word of God has said about uh, a situation or about you. Praise the Lord. I also keep telling uh, people I share with that when they say and this is the word of God. Be quick to, wait, wait, after the reading, be quick to say it is the word of God because indeed it is the word of God. It is not your word. It is God's word. Don't read it and walk away. It is hear the word of the Lord and, and, and you receive it because indeed it is not your word. It is God's word. So as we, as we, we, we learn together this evening, may we be open. To the Holy Spirit, praise the Lord. And uh, and and like Mama Rufina already ably read the text and the topic for our discussion is divine counsel in spiritual warfare. Divine counsel in spiritual warf warfare. The terms are not strange to us. Divine counsel. Just the word divine suggests of God or from God or from the heavenly being, a deity, and in our context, 
the Lord God our creator. And the word counsel, counsel is purely advice or, or guidance or instruction or direction. Counsel. You, you, what, uh, you usually hear lawyers being called counsel. <laughs> it's because they give advice. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. As, mm -hmm. as I prepared to share, I, I, I read a quotation from um, this Chinese writer, The Art of War. I know that most of us have read it. And, and there's a quotation that for me, for spiritual warfare, it, it kind of explains it or brings it home. He writes and says that if you know the enemy and know yourself, you did not fear the result of a hundred battles. If you know yourself, but no, do not know the enemy, for every victory gained, you will also suffer defeat. If you know neither the enemy, know yourself, you will succumb in every battle. I, found, I, found, I find that statement loaded. One is that you should know yourself and know your enemy. Like we had yesterday, those of us who attended uh, the service, the, the preacher really brought it home. You must know yourself, know God, and know your enemy. Once you know yourself and you know the enemy, you have already conquered what should be terrifying you or what would make you fear. But if you do not know yourself, know, know the enemy, you're just in trouble. And like we had yesterday, there are no middle grounds. There's no middle ground. In this walk, you are either in the kingdom of God or you're outside of the kingdom of God and hence in the kingdom of Satan. There's no middle ground. And you cannot be in both kingdoms. It is impossible. You cannot serve two masters. You please one and neglect the other. Praise the Lord. So the battle lines, as soon as you said yes to Jesus, the battle lines were drawn. So, and, so you're engaged in battle every single minute. As long as you have breath in you, you are on the battleground. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. So, Joshua chapter 9, verse 14, you know, clearly tells us that Joshua did not seek God's counsel. He foolishly did not seek God's counsel. And because he did not, he did not see that the Gibeonites, were actually deceiving him. You know that Satan is a deceiver. John 10, 10 clearly tells us his mission is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And to be able to steal from you and I, he first deceives you. He's been a deceiver right from the beginning. In Genesis, we see him deceiving if if you don't open your eyes and your ears and your understanding then you fall prey of the deceit of satan praise the lord so joshua foolishly did not inquire of the lord and the entire israel and you know he fell prey to the deceit of the Gibeonites. Now, Joshua is a seasoned fighter. Joshua is, is, is not an ordinary man, you know, but 
he did not expect this to be coming his way. One, we have seen from verse one to about verse six, that the, the kings have gathered, about six kings have gathered with one purpose, and the purpose is to fight Joshua and Israel. And perhaps Joshua is, is engaged in planning for this battle. Joshua and Israel are putting their, their arsenals together to fight the, the, the six kings. Just imagine, think about it, the setting. Six kings are no joking subject. But you see, the enemy comes still three. He comes when you least expect. He comes when you, 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 you don't think he, that this is the direction he's coming through. So while Joshua and Israel's attention is to fight the six kings, he's not expecting the deceit from the Gibeonites. And because he has not inquired of the Lord, he falls into their trap and, and enters and executes a treaty with them, even though he did not know where, who, and what they were capable of. Praise the Lord. Now, Acts chapter 20, verse 27, Paul encourages us to seek the whole counsel of God. The whole counsel. So you can, you and I cannot read just one scripture and think that we have got uh, the counsel of God on a matter. That means that we must take time. It can be 10 minutes, it can be 30 minutes, it can be, but on a daily basis, set some time where you interact with the word of God. And, and, and preferably in the morning, because the morning sets you to go. So you have the word on your mind, you have the word on your tongue, and, and, and you are awake throughout the, the, the day. Because it is from the word of God that we obtain counsel. So Paul advises us in Acts chapter 20, verse 27, to seek the whole counsel, the whole divine counsel, as is contained in the word of God. Praise the Lord. The whole counsel of God, really simply put, is the whole purpose and plan of God for you and I in a particular aspect. You need to know the purpose and the plan of God for your life in a particular season or in, in a particular circumstance. Praise the Lord. So, counsel, God's counsel is important. God's counsel is concerned with your salvation, is concerned with life matters, it is concerned with faith. And this, like I said, is expressly set down in scriptures. And so you and I really must read it for our survival, for our survival. Your survival as a believer depends on how much God's word you have hidden in your heart. No wonder David says, I have hidden your word in my heart um, that I may not sin against you. If you don't hide God's word in your heart, you are prey to the deceit, to the deceitfulness of the enemy. Praise the Lord. So, so then what is spiritual warfare? Spiritual warfare. Simply put, warfare means the battle between when we are talking about spiritual warfare, we are talking about the, the battle between good and evil. We are talking about the battle between the kingdom of God 
and the kingdom of Satan. We are talking about the, 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 the battle between good and evil. You know? So, you, you, you cannot be in between. You can't say me, I am half good and uh, I am half bad. It is not possible. So, so that's why we are saying that the battle lines oh, yeah. are clearly drawn. You're either on the side of good or you're on the side of evil. You're either on the side of God or you're on, on the side of Satan. You're either in the kingdom of God or in the kingdom of Satan. You're either a child of light or you are a child of darkness. You're either salt to the earth or you are not. Praise the Lord. That is the battle. That is the battle. And the battle we know. Keep in mind that Satan knows for sure that he cannot defeat God. He knows. He actually knows that his place is already designated hell. And he's not about to go there alone. The best thing he can do is to attack you and I, whom God loves most. Praise the Lord. Because he knows that he cannot defeat God. So he will attack us whom he knows that there is yes. There is a relationship between us and God. And God loves us so dearly, so much so that he had to send his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die for us on the cross. So he knows that God loves us deeply. He knows that if he succeeds on tempting you and making you fall, he hurts God. So he's aware and he has to fight. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. But you see, we are not fighting from a weak position. We are not fighting from a weak position. And we know, based on Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, the, the, the things we are fighting against, the battle, is stipulated. Paul helps us to know that we are fighting against powers of darkness. We are fighting against principalities. We are fighting against rulers of this dark world. We are fighting against sp spiritual wickedness in, in, in heavenly places. The, the things we are against are clearly stipulated for us. So. We are not fighting from a point of ignorance, but a point of knowledge. And if we are fighting from a point of knowledge, then you need counsel. You need counsel, not from anywhere else, but from the Lord himself. Why do you need counsel? Why you and I need counsel? One is that you may discern the enemy's tricks. You may discern. You see, we've seen from the text that we have read, Joshua was not discerning when the Gibeonites presented themselves. He did not discern that they are from a few kilometers. And, and, and the, comment, the commentary says about 15 or so kilometers, a walkable distance. They were close. He did not think, he did not listen to their, to their accent. Perhaps he would have known that they are from just across the valley. He was not discerning of the trickery of the enemy. But you see, the enemy packaged himself in such a way that if you're not discerning, you will not detect. They, they orchestrated their strategy. They loaded their food. I, I'm sure it was already old food. They, 
they got their old wine skins, I am sure they were already old. Like the strategy, they knew that out of 80 or so percent, the Israelites will not detect it, and they didn't. Keep in mind that if you're not discerning, you're just an open prey for the enemy. You're, 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 you're prone, you're naked for the attacks from Satan. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So godly counsel will help you and I to discern the tricks of the enemy. Second Corinthians chapter 2, from verse 11, Paul clearly tells us that for us as children of God, we are very familiar with Satan's evil schemes. We, we, we ought to know how he operates. And I keep telling um, the fellowships that I, I share with or the people I fellowship with, I keep saying, when you hear a man saying or a woman saying that, you know, it was at a point of weakness, one thing led to another, then before I knew we were in bed together. No, that's not, that's a lie. Because adultery or, or fornication is one of the sins that are planned for. People pay hotels to go to. That one is not one thing leading to another. No. So if you are not discerning, you will fall prey to the schemes of Satan. You see his schemes, Paul has told us, we are familiar with the way he works. We are familiar with the way, how cunning he can be. So you need discernment. And it is from divine counsel that you receive discerning. Praise the Lord. So once you have the discernment, Satan cannot outsmart you. Once we have received divine counsel that helps us to be discerning, then Satan is outsmarted. We outsmart him when he comes with his trickery to attack us. But as we saw, Joshua was outsmarted by the Gibeonites. And the reason he was, was he's told to us in verse 14 that he did not seek God's counsel. We seek God's counsel from his word. We also seek God's counsel through prayer. We seek divine counsel from his servants. Now I know that we have a challenge with my man of God or with my woman of God, but that does not take away their place in giving godly counsel to the church. Praise the Lord. I, I know that there's a, a, a slippery ground there of my man of God or my woman of God, but that notwithstanding, I stress that one, that it does not take away their place to give counsel divine counsel to the church or to the children of God. Praise the Lord. So with divine counsel, you are able to know the nature of the battle. You see, like, like the writer of the art of war is saying, if you know your enemy, you know yourself, you are you're able to win the battle of a hundred times, you, you're, you're just able. But if you do not know yourself, you also don't know the enemy, you don't know the nature of the battle. You don't know what to engage. You don't know how to engage. You don't know when to engage. So divine counsel comes in to help you and I to know the nature of the battle. From the text, the kings beyond the river, eh? they are about six. They are gathering together. Their purpose is one. The kind of battle they are, they are going to put up is, is, is not a small battle. 
you know. And Joshua is not is not alert all around himself with with Israel, perhaps because he is he's overwhelmed by what by what he's going against. But you see the nature of the battle is not one-sided, is not one direction. It, it comes in different directions. Satan is not going to attack you if he knows that uh, you have overcome sexual sin, that he's not going to bring the same temptation. If he's tried it out and you've defeated him, he's not going to bring that one. If he knows you have overcome the, the, the love for money, you know, taking money which does not belong to you just because you're the head of this unit. He knows that one you have defeated him. He's not going to bring the same thing. No, he's going to probably look at your point of weakness, maybe your tongue or, or my tongue. He knows probably you're quick to anger. You're prone to anger. He will attack you in that direction. So Satan does not attack us using one trick. No, he comes in different packages. So you need to be discerning to know the nature of the attack. Where has he come from? What is he using to attack? Praise the Lord. And you know that you know that he will attack when you least expect him to attack because he comes as a thief. He's a thief. Satan is a, a thief. To, he comes to steal. So he comes when you least attack. As children of God, we should be careful to not lower our guards. Your guard should always be on. You know, First Peter chapter 5, 8 to 9, the scripture tells us, be sober, be alert, you know, and continuous at all times. For the enemy, your adversary, the devil, crawls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Now, when you look at that word brawl, it means to move still three undetected, but with an intention to trap your prey. That word brawl is to move stealthily in search of a prey. It is to lack, L-U-R-K. It is to roam, to scavenge in a predatory manner. You, you, you need to be alert and sober because the predator is on the move and his strategy is to devour. Now the word to devour, my friend, it even scares you. It is, it is to eat up voraciously, to consume destructively, recklessly, or wantonly, like no mercy. Tear this limb, tear that, tear, 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 tear. That is what what uh, Peter is telling us, be sober. If you're not sober, the enemy will devour you. How you get to be sober? Divine counsel. Praise the Lord. You know, like we learned yesterday, the war we are engaged in <laughs> is a war of resistance. So you need divine counsel. That is why when you read James, James uh, chapter four, verse seven, James makes it clear. He says to you and I resist the devil, resist him and he will flee from you. So if you don't have divine counsel, which we get from the word of God, you will not know that you should resist Satan. Resistance is not simple. You can't resist one day and walk away. No, you can't res resist a week and give up. It is daily resistance. 
So once you know the enemy, you're able to resist him. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. The battle is daily. There is no middle ground. You and I are on the battlefront every day. And as such, divine counsel is critical. Friends, it is critical. Divine counsel helps you to discern between civilian affairs. You know, <laughs> most of us or many of us, many believers, we find ourselves in civilian affairs. Second Timothy chapter two, verse four. You know, Paul is telling Timothy, you are a soldier. You, you are a soldier. You are in active service and you cannot afford to be caught up or entangled in civilian life, in civilian affairs. You, you, you think about a soldier who goes to the bar with a gun. When he gets drunk, my friend, he, his gun can easily be taken, taken away from him. It, it is criminal and, and he can be punished for it. So you cannot be a soldier in active service and afford to be engaged or entangled in civilian affairs. Please note that a soldier operates in hostile environments. If it's not an environment, it may be an environment, maybe a political environment, it may be a politically sensitive environment. It, it, it may be, you know, a, a, you, for a soldier, they know, they know that they cannot be engaged with, in civilian affairs. They, they try and keep to, 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 to the code, praise the Lord, praise Jesus. And as a soldier, you know that you are using or you're utilizing specialized tactics or techniques or procedures. You're not ordinary. You're an extraordinary person in the kingdom. And, and I think that's why then Paul is saying, you are a soldier in active service. Don't be entangled in civilian affairs. The tragedy of our time, the tragic reality is that many of us are entangled in civilian affairs. We are in places where we are not supposed to be, you know? We are in workplaces, but there's no difference between us and those who are on the other side. When people are planning to steal government, you're part of the group, and, and we have now baptized it, we are calling it a deal, you know? It, it is sad, it is sad. It is sad that it is even in church. Corruption is not only in government. It is in our offices. It, we are participants. If you are not giving it, at least if you're not receiving it, you may be giving it, or you may be facilitating the process of it happening. You and I must be alert. We must be sober. We must steer clear from civilian, civilian affairs because we are soldiers in active service. The quick example that comes to mind for me, and, and I've said this in several places, is, is um, the Lady Justice uh, Julia Sebutinde. When the International Court of Justice decided to punish Israel, she's alert. She simply said no. She wrote a dissenting judgment and the whole world knows that she's not party to the decision. Sometimes you and I have to stand our ground. Once you're alert and sober, there are decisions you will resist. There are decisions you'll say, I will not participate in this one. Even if it means me losing my job. I liked the testimony of the preacher yesterday about his children. 
the daughter decided, uh -uh, I am not going to be the one who takes this money to bribe anybody. I am willing to go back home, even if it means me not having a job. Sometimes we have to make the choice. We cannot afford to be civilians. We are in active service. So divine counsel enables you and I to take your stand and indeed stand for Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Divine counsel helps us to know how to use the armor to stand firm. You know that armor has been given to us in Ephesians chapter 6, from verse 10 on downwards. If you don't have divine counsel, you will not know how to utilize the armor. You know the scripture says that you put on the whole armor. Some of us are putting on one piece. Just imagine you are a soldier who has no gum, who has no boots, who has no you only have a helmet. So you will be the first casualty because the enemy is going to hit you in the chest. So with divine counsel deployed, then you know that you need to put on the full armor of God. All the pieces must be at play at all times, my dear at all times, not when you feel like, you know, it must be active, the, the full armor of God, piece by piece. Now, that armor plays different, different roles. It, it protects different parts of the body. The helmet does not protect the feet. So you cannot use the helmet for the feet. The, the, the boots cannot protect the chest. So you need, you need the shield to protect your chest. The rest of the pieces cannot be the sword. So you need the sword to be able to kill the enemy. Because if you don't have, after you have arrested the enemy, then he will run because you don't have a sword to finish him. So, Divine counsel in this in, in spiritual warfare enables you and I to put the armor of God to effective use. Praise the Lord. Because you know what you're standing against. We have already seen that the, the, the schemes of the enemy, uh, we are familiar to, to, to them. We know them. They are not, they are not strange. We, we are not ignorant of his trickery. We are aware, you know. So you're able to stand against all the schemes, not one. A scheme is a strategy. It is a strategy, a scheme. The devil puts out a scheme, puts out a strategy. One may be to deceive, one may be to steal, the other is to kill, is to destroy. So with divine counsel, you know how to put the entire armor of God to active use. As a Christian, you and I know the schemes of Satan. We know how to see them. We know how to detect them. We know how to prevent them. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. And, and that for me, I find exciting. I find exciting. As a Christian, you know a scheme when you see one. You know it. I mean, you are a married woman. What are you doing, Munkukutu, with the, you know, a, a man who is not your husband? Have you not seen a scheme developing? You, you, you are a child of God. You are a, an active soldier. What are you doing when people are planning to steal government resources when they are calling it a deal? And it is your account they are going to use to pass money. 
or you have it in your home, you're, you're even hiding it from the bank, that scheme is clear to you. You're able to resist it, you know? When people are grabbing land, you're not pate. You're honestly not pate. I, I keep asking, even in my office, a person with 50, 50 square miles of land, what do you want with it? You may say she's ignorant, but what are you doing? 50 square miles, friends. One square mile is enough. An individual in this country has 50 square miles and he has maybe 200 cows. You're literally denying others the means of production. You know, what, what do you want to do with it? You, and, and then you find that the individual grabbed it. He didn't even buy it or she didn't buy it. They grabbed it, either it was a government ranch meant for everybody, now it belongs to one person. That, you, you're just a civilian. You're, you're not fit for the, for, for the kingdom, praise the Lord. Civilian affairs, eh? Friends, let's, let's, Let's be on guard. Let's be alert and defeat the, 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 the works of, of Satan. You are a medical doctor. When people are stealing medicine, why, why should you be party? You, 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 you are there to serve. You are God's healing hand on earth. You know, you should be proud when you know that God has taken your hands and is using them to operate and to give and restore life. You don't want to be the one who sells the, the, the hospital equipment that is meant to help. You know, you are not in civilian, you're not engaged in that kind of dealing because you know that you are in active service as a child of God. So, as I conclude, again, I go back to James chapter 4, verse 7. Divine counsel will enable you and I to clearly fight the enemy. And you're going to fight if you have submitted yourself to God. That's where I will start from. Submit yourself under the mighty arm of God. Submit yourself. You and I, God is calling us to submit ourselves to him. And then after submitting to him, then we resist. We resist the devil. And like I said, resistance is not for one season. It's not for one day. It's not for half a day. It is, it's daily resistance until the enemy flees from you. The beauty is that when you defeat him in one in one, one, one area, he knows this area is not going to come back soon because you are awake in that area. Then he will bring another area. Once you defeat him in that one, then he knows this one, this area is, is, is not, I'm not going to joke with this one. This one is alert. The enemy has to know that you are alert. He knows, he knows. If the enemy doesn't know you, then really even in the kingdom, you're not there. Because the enemy should know that you are fighting him, that you're resisting him, and that he has no option but to flee from you and I. Praise the Lord. So let's, let's seek counsel, seek divine counsel, from the word of God, let's seek divine counsel from, from through prayer. You may be praying and God brings, brings a revelation to you, the things you need to deal with, the things you need to, 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 to put away. Let's seek divine counsel from, from our, 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 our leaders, you know, don't, don't be stuck when you can consult, when you can ask. Reverend Jafu is here. 
the provost is here. You know, God has put them in our midst to help us to serve. So seek divine counsel. Praise the Lord. May the Lord richly bless you. Praise Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Mama Rufina, Thank, I you, have amen. Thank you, Counsel Sharon. Thank you for the great sharing. Thank you for the eye opener. A reminder, a reminder to each and every one of us, tying together the bits which we may have forgotten. Divine counsel in spiritual warfare is what our speaker has been talking about. Thank you for the great sharing. What did I pick from there? Several, several things, so many things. I'll uh, highlight some of them, pray over them, then hand over to our clergy to finish the evening because our time is far spent. From the start, from the start, our speaker made it very, very clear to us that we should know ourselves. We should know ourselves that we belong to God and the enemy is always available. The enemy is fighting us at all times. We must be alert. We must not be on the border. We cannot be on the side of God or on the side of Satan. There is no middle ground. We must keep our eyes open at all times. The enemy is available. The enemy comes un unexpectedly and is ready to devour. So we have to be alert at all times. And she advised also on how we can be alert. She said we have to read the word, pray at all times, and be, uh, and, uh, be in the word each and every other day. Not once, not twice, but daily, 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 preferably in the morning. The whole purpose is to make us alert and hear the voice of God all the time. She also enlightened us on what is spiritual warfare. She told us clearly it is the battle between good and evil, the battle between God and Satan, between light and darkness. Satan knows that his place is in hell, and he doesn't want to go to it alone. Our prayer is we should not go with him. He is all ever on the fight. Why do we need counsel? Why do we need counsel to be able to discern the enemy who is always tricking us, who is always coming up with new schemes, who never runs out of schemes and is ever fighting us? So we too must be alert and equipped. Once we have discerned, we are able to tell the correct thing. And we need prayers, not just from ourselves, but from friends, from man of God, from counsel, and so on. Though this might be slippery ground, she said, divine counsel helps us to know the nature of the battle that we are fighting. When you are fighting from a position of knowledge, you fight better. So we need to know the nature of the fight. The enemy is prowling, he's ready to tear us apart anytime. In conclusion, our speaker said that divine counsel enables us to fight the enemy. The divine counsel enables, enables us to fight the enemy. We need to submit and submit ourselves under the mighty arm of God. Resist the devil. And from the beginning, he will know that this particular trick will not work in, on this person and this particular trick will not work on the other. Even if it means standing out of the crowd and fight and fight a difficult situation, a trick that the enemy has come up with, situations of corruption and so in our daily life, we need to stand and stand firm in Christ. Let us pray. Mighty Father, King of heaven, Lord of glory, most high God, I come before you this evening to pray, my Father God, to pray over the discussion that has been running. 
King of Kings, Lord of Lords, help us to, to be alert, to be alert at all times, to know ourselves, my Father God, so that whenever the enemy attacks, whenever Satan attacks us, we are in position to fight back, so that we are fighting from position of knowledge, so that the, we go into our armory and get out the right weapon. King of heaven, Lord of glory, on our own, we cannot fight. We need to submit to you, my Father God, at all times and pray to you in the mighty name of Jesus and read your word at all times, day and night. Read your word and seek knowledge from it, my Father God, in whichever situation that we come across, in whatever circumstance that comes to us. King of heaven, Lord of glory, it is only you who can save us. It is only you who can rescue us from the schemes of the enemy. The schemes of the enemy are not straightforward and only one. It comes at the time when we don't expect. It comes at the time when, from a direction which we don't know. King of heaven, Lord of glory, keep us on the alert. Keep us on the alert so that we are able to fight the enemy and, and resist my father God, because the times are not good. The times are not good at all times. And even now, it is we are living in such a difficult situation. We are living in a situation where the tricks of the devil are making the situation look like as if that is what it is supposed to be. The situation of corruption in which we are, my Father God, King of heaven, Lord of glory. People make it look as if without bribing, without giving a bribe, nothing can work. King of kings, Lord of lords, equip us afresh Strengthen us, O Lord. Keep us alert so that we may continue to look to you only at all times. Master Lord, we surrender ourselves to you. Cover us at all times. Be with us, my Father God. Never depart from us, King of heaven. Lord of glory, we thank you. We honor you. We magnify your name. In the mighty name of Jesus, I've prayed. Amen. Amen. Amen.